do all endo treated teeth need a crown if i ask you this question i know you're thinking in your head hi yaar of course and you're not wrong in thinking that because that is exactly what we were taught this tipsy tuesday i want to change that perspective and give you a different thought process okay have a look at these two different cans of coke one is a perfectly filled can the other is a crushed broken completely distorted can if i give you a sealed can and i ask you to press it squeeze it break it distort it you cannot do it you cannot basically do any harm to that can until you go ahead and open the tab at the top once you've opened that tab you basically have broken the integrity of that can and now you can easily crush it that top lid is called the key stone or the corner stone it is what holds the entire unit in place now if you look at monuments friends that have survived decades and centuries and generations together a lot of these including the iconic taj mahal that we are so proud of flaunting in our country have a dome shaped architecture a dome is regarded often as the strongest geometric design now let's quickly look into what a dome is all about first let's look at the bottom portion of the dome that is in red this is the portion of the dome that is in tension it wants to break the dome apart what is holding the dome in place is the portion in blue that you see on top this is called as the compression dome this is called as the tension dome the compression dome is holding the entire dome in place it is what has the keystone or the cornerstone on top and the base is called as the tension zone all right or the tension part of the dome what you see in green here friends is called as the inflection plane it's that portion of the dome where the compression and the tension can kind of equalize each other if i were to lift this top portion of the dome which is often like the minar you lift it up and you break that the entire dome actually completely collapses because the balance is lost now remember god designed teeth to last for a really long time like these monuments he also used the dome concept if you look closely enamel sits on top of dentin like a dome and the height of contour of a tooth is nothing but the inflection plane everything that lies above this is the compression dome it's called as the bio rim when it comes to tooth the bio dome my apologies it's called as the bio dome and what you see in red which is the tension area is called as the bio rim now remember when i talk about the concept of partial restorations i always think about preserving as much enamel as possible especially in the bio rim area which is the tension area now typically when you do a root canal what have you done you've made an access opening through the occlusal portion which basically means you have gone ahead and broken that corner stone or that keystone which is the reason why endodontically treated teeth are often weaker and more susceptible to breakage that is primarily because the compression dome has been compromised and the tension dome or the tension rim is now going to go ahead and fracture that's why endodontically treated teeth often fracture horizontally right at this junction which is nothing but the base of the dome the ideal way to restore a tooth even after endodontic treatment is to limit the restoration in the compression dome so imagine you've done a class 1 access uh, for endo and you want to restore that case the best way would be to go ahead and make a prosthesis that basically lies above the inflection plane it recreates the compression dome thereby giving strength back to the tooth we typically in dentistry call these overlays crown lays or occlusal veneers and they look like this 
that happens to be the finger of my wife. She had gotten some nail art done. I had some prosthesis with me that I was bonding in. I said, let's grab a picture. This is an ideal restoration for a weakened endodontically treated tooth. Let me go ahead and share this with you friends. The key to long-term success with any prosthetic replacement is preservation of the bio ring. Remember that cervical ring of enamel is extremely important to prevent abutment tooth fracture. I'm going to go ahead and make some recommendations for you. I've just created a hypothetical scale here where I'm showing the same tooth. I want you to imagine it is endotreated. I know we dentists are good with imagination. So imagine it's endotreated. Same tooth with only an occlusal access. Same tooth where one marginal ridge has been compromised. The same tooth where both marginal ridges have been compromised. Always remember, the strongest portion of a tooth is the marginal ridge. Okay, so if your endodontic treatment was successfully completed with an access that allow for both the marginal ridges to still be intact, guess what? The ideal prosthetic replacement is a direct composite post obturation restoration. That is it. This tooth does not need for you to cut the tooth out and give a cap on it. That will in fact weaken the tooth, decreasing the possibility of long-term success. Just do a direct composite filling and this tooth will survive. Not all endotreated teeth need crowns. Now imagine a scenario where one marginal ridge has been compromised, which means this tooth is weaker. Eight marginal ridge abhi bhi achha hai. Now think. How are the force vectors? If the force vectors are favorable, which means the patient does not have a very heavy masticatory load, there is no tooth loss, there is no parafunction that is happening, there's no ab fraction, cervical enamel is intact. In such a situation, you can go ahead and do a direct composite class two, and it will also survive. Worst case scenario, if something breaks, it's your composite that will break, just come back and redo it. Your abutment will not fracture. But if you have a patient who's, let's say, a heavy mastic, uh, masticatory load person, big masseters is probably bruxing on it, and the force vectors are not favorable in such a scenario, don't use direct composites, but do an indirect inlay or an onlay. An inlay that only involves the portion that has been lost or an onlay that caps the cusp, but do not extend that onlay onto the marginal ridges, which, is a, which are intact. So only limited basically to that portion of a tooth that is already weak. However, the moment you get an MOD restoration, remember this tooth is probably the weakest amongst everyone. Marginal ridges are no longer supporting. This case needs an indirect crown lay. And as I just explained, a crown lay is something that caps all the cusps and it sits like a dome on top. Why can you not just do a composite filling here and get away? Why can't you not just do an inlay and get away? It is because when you lose marginal ridges, you tend to increase the possibility of cuspal flexure and fracture. So look here, same tooth from a slightly different perspective. When your cruiser load comes in, okay, and if you do just a composite filling, there's a very high possibility that tooth will flex outwards and your cusps will fracture. So just imagine your composite is still standing, but the cusps are broken. That's not something that we desire. So in such a situation, always do a cuspal coverage. But remember, there is no need to go ahead and break the sanctity of that enamel ring, which is your bio ring. Only limit your restoration to the occlusal area. And that is it. Once again, I repeat, not all endodontically treated teeth need full coverage restorations. Friends, if you wish to learn more from me, I strongly recommend go ahead and check out mikeducation.com and use this promo code which is specific to my Tipsy Tuesday viewers and it will offer you a concession on your subscription. Once again, friends, this is my Tipsy Tuesday for today. Do go ahead and like it, do comment, do it, do share it with your friends so that we can improve the quality of dentistry in India and across the globe one Tuesday at a time.